I need these. There we go. Okay, would you like to do an introduction? Um, sure. So welcome class. Um, thank you to Norm Bachwald, who is um, on the uh, library staff, who is going to give us some information today about how to utilize the library resources to get accurate health um, resources for the upcoming middle school presentation project you'll doing. So thank you so much, Norm, for doing this for us. It is my pleasure. And um, some of the things I'm going to be showing you today are going to be a little bit different than what you might have experienced in some other library orientation. So um, I just want you to understand that because um, I'm especially going to be trying to help you find um, resources that definitely meet the level of the students who you will be doing these presentations to. I will also be showing you how to find some additional information that will help you and as you to put these presentations together, but I'm sure that the main focus for you will be um, finding the resources that um, are at the reading level and the understandable level for your students. So I mean, some of your students are going to be a little bit lost if they're suddenly thrown in a nursing health article that has all these, you know, um, Latinate terms for all these conditions and diseases, and then you have, you know, brand names of medications, and then their actual name. So um, we're going to try to focus on um, introductory concepts and information that um, best meets the needs of uh, your the middle school students of who you be providing these presentations to. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And course it disappeared so there we go so the library has created a guide specifically for this assignment and so the web address for that is library guides written as one word dot chabot college dot edu slash h l t h the acronym you know for help classes then 40, then the last name of your instructor. And that's how you get directly to this page. If for whatever reason you don't have that with you at the moment, let me backtrack a couple of steps to um, where we are at the college homepage. And from the college homepage under academics, library is the third option on the right of those choices. So you click on that. And then on this page, while in general, if you were doing some regular library research, you might start the library catalog or more often even than that, you'd be getting an, in our actual databases. We're actually going to go to the library orientation tab. And then we scroll down alphabetically until we get to help 40, followed by the last name of your instructor. And that takes you directly to this guide. This guide is divided into a number of different pages. So there's the home page. This is especially your introductory page of where to go or where, where, where you would want to begin if you need help. Um, we have our general consumer health information page, which as you can see includes a lot of links and a lot of um, mentions of various different um, key reference ebook titles. We have a link to a library catalog. Uh, one thing I will let you know ahead of time right now because of the COVID crisis, we are currently physically closed. So what you're mainly going to find in the library catalog would be electronic resources as you would find in our databases. So uh, the library catalog is probably not as important this time around, but in general for your research for the future, I'm um, definitely a place to go to especially find uh, our physical books, our physical items, our physical DVDs. Um, laptops and hotspots are currently available through um, I'm building 200 and um, I just realized I didn't put this information on this page as of yet. I will do that after my presentation today. It will be on the home page if you need a laptop or a hotspot. Those are still available as long as they last because right now we're doing something different. When there's semester long checkouts than the regular say a three day checkouts because of course we're physically closed. So. Um, 
you'll be exploring that through there if you need that. We have some more additional nutritional and fitness information as well as where to go to buy more nonprofits beyond what is being shown to you today. Um, I won't be talking about this page as much except to warn you and definitely to warn your students that when it comes to searching the public World Wide Web and Google at large, the odds of coming across say pseudoscience and um, controversy science. Um, I mean, some of you probably have already come across this in your social media regarding, for example, COVID that one of your friends may have posted, for example, and of course it was absolutely oakum. Um, you don't want to use the web for important information such as this. And if you do, then you need to tell your students how to evaluate information and then um, some ways of searching around Google. And this is a mention on this page, but in most cases, I'm gonna be encouraging you to go to the websites that are indicated in this um, LibGuide, as well as the library resources that we subscribe to. Well, that's gonna be important for you for whatever you share with your students. And then to your students, you're gonna be encouraging them to get um, electronic library cards. A lot of them probably already have one already. And if not, they might need to, along with their parent, to get one. Um, in a lot of cases, this can be done remotely now. There might be a rare occasion where there might, you might have to, the, the student and their parent might have to physically go to the library. But in most cases, I mean, it's done remotely. It depends upon the library. And so um, you don't want to focus on the web as much, especially because there is a lot of um, cloaked racist websites out there as um, some of these um, guides show you, as well as a lot of hokey scientific studies. And while um, there's two videos on here, I would not recommend you show to our students because they're a bit racy. Um, they're definitely important for you to know to maybe explain to your students if your students say, well, why can't I just go on Google and type whatever. Um, there's some definitely good reasons and rationale for why. And finally, um, how the site sources, we have both um, our MLA and APA citation handouts, quick, quick methods of um, the, the most common instances that they come up in your research. Of course, in most cases, you're gonna be looking for electronic versions of your um, items. And so your citations, when you use them, will usually have what is either called a document object identifier at the end, the DOI number, or what is called a permalink. And I'll be showing you a little bit about how to find that later. We do have also a Noodle Tools um, that's a citation generator that's better than what you might find most on the free web. Um, Easy Bib is one of the better ones, but it's only free for MLA, not for APA. And if you're using APA, you'll definitely want to use Noodle Tools. Okay, so let's begin on our homepage. And first of all, if you have any questions and need any help from a librarian, down below where it says our hours for fall 2020, while you see a big bold, we are physically closed until further notice. You notice further down below that there are hours when a Chabot librarian is available. Plus, not only that, but outside of those hours, we use a service so that there's guest librarians from around the world who can also help you if you have questions. And how you get that help is you click on the chat reference link, and then you fill out your name. Your email address. Your email address is going to be very important because um, if they lose connection or if it needs to be follow up, there's a way that the, the, the library can contact you. And then a question such as, say, I'm finding resources for middle school on, say, um, the dangers of babies or something like that. I'm going to add this note since I'm going to be about to send this, this is a test, so the librarian that's on duty will know. And so you see, we get a, a notification that says the library will connect shortly, and usually within a minute or two, um, the librarian will get back to us, unless, I mean, they're currently helping someone. And it looks like right now, oh, yeah, 
So um, one of our one of our librarians, Kim Morrison, has just joined and just told us hi. And of course, if we were continuing on to the next step, she would then um, help us. And it looks like she, and she's just asking us what's up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let her know that this is only a task. What a great resource for the students, Norm. Yes. Yes, this is something we started to be able to get a few years ago. And um, especially since the spring, it has been used heavily. I'm and sure. we definitely, um, and we followed up quite a bit through email interactions with students to, you know, if they needed further help on their research, we can mm -hmm. further help them that way. So that's- That's wonderful. That's the, yeah, I, I hope our students utilize that. Yeah. Thank now, you. if you want to get help directly from me, you can definitely email me. My email is available on this page. I do my best to look at my email as regularly as I possibly can. There are times during the weekends, though, um, it might be a while before you might hear back from me. And if you do email me, let me know that you're from this class and maybe even a little idea what your question is. And then um, I can help you from there if it's not that immediate. Otherwise, I would go to the chat reference box. Also here is um, an app called Lean Library, which I strongly recommend that you download. And um, this works with any web browser extension. So not with smartphones as of yet, but it does work with any web browser extension. And so um, when you have this extension on you, whenever you're on Google at large and something's available at the library, you will get a notification that not only is it available at the library, but if you click on the little pop-up link that will show up on the top right, that's what you can do next. And so you notice I let them know I'm at Chabot College. Don't say another library, otherwise it won't lead you to the right sources. You want to make sure that it's matching what our resources actually have. We subscribe to over 50 databases that include, you know, magazine, journal, newspaper, articles, all sorts of ebooks. And it's important that, of course, it matches with this so that if you're searching um, Google at large or even Amazon, um, it may not work right away because I just um, loaded it for today. But let's say that um, this is an ebook I know that we have in our collection. If, say, you were here on Amazon, there would eventually be a pop up window on the right. Yeah, there it is that lets us know that the library has it. You click on that. Sometimes you have to click a second time because there's an intermediary page. You still click on that top right. And then we eventually come across this screen, which is the same type of screen you would go if you're logging into a database at the same time. And so this is the general login screen to all of the college library databases. And so what you enter is in your WID number and then your six digit class web pin. And that's how you would then get into either a particular database or in this case, an individual ebook. And as you can see, this is a clear example where instead of considering purchasing a book or an ebook for a Kindle, you could immediately read it here on your browser because it's available at the library. So that's the importance of the Lean Library app. And so um, again, that is available on the middle left and there is a tutorial link listed right below on how to use it if you have any questions. Um, as for the numbers listed here, um, those aren't as immediate as if you go to chat reference. So I recommend if you need help the soonest that you use our chat reference box. Okay, so the page that you're probably gonna be using most often is underneath here under consumer health information. And so our federal government does provide a very important research tool related to health called Medline Plus. And so this is definitely, if you're talking about what's available on the free public World Wide web that's considered the most authoritative and especially well-organized, um, this is where I would recommend that you go. We have different links for 
particular areas that you might want to explore, such as here for exercise and physical fitness. Notice they have their own page in there. Um, there's one that focuses directly to teen health as well. And then, of course, there are other places that you could go, such as the National Institute of Health, which actually provides Medline Plus. But if you need to go back a certain step to search even more, this is where you can find that as well. Now, when you do a search in Medline Plus, let's say that um, I will use um, Medline we enter our search term to see, okay, what are the health effects about vaping? And you see that provides us immediately to some definite results, such as the risks of vaping, e-cigarettes, which is um, a term often used for vaping, definitely, and drug effects vaping devices. And when you click on that, you see you get a general introductory information here. You get some definite study of what has been known, and it's very clear, easy, matter-of-fact language that your students will usually understand. Now, some of the things that might be listed on the bottom here, learn more, that may be where it might become a bit sophisticated. So you might want to, um, depending on what you want to present, um, explore some of these and determine if this is something that your students could easily understand. And if so, you can definitely include that into your presentation. So that's definitely a good place to go. Now, local information is definitely available at your disposal as well. And so the big blue book is where you want to go to find that. And um, it's also, also known as Call 211 or 211 Alameda County. And when you get to this page here, you would go to the Health, Housing, and Human Services option. And then you can select something from here. Or if you're not exactly sure where to begin, you can go to the keyword search on the bottom and um, enter a search term. And notice that some suge sometimes suggestions will come up that are more complete than what we're searching, such as smoking making cessation. Let's say I want to select that. And from here, as you can see, it led me to various different nonprofit organizations, such as um, it looks like the American Lung Association of California. Um, I'd be very curious to see what um, they have to say. And here we have a general introduction. We click on the suggested link. And now here we are in the American Lung Association for California. We can um, explore their site or search for more. And then we can definitely share that with our students. On the left is a discussion about access to libraries, which include the importance of why they are more important in Google. And down below is um, a couple of links of, um, I only listed two here. Um, otherwise, you know, you can Google search your um, desired public library for the area that where, where your students are. And when you click on it, these links go to an online account application. So let's say that um, I'm showing an example here. Let's say the student was born in 2009. And so um, this lets them know that it's leading them to the application for if they're either age 13, they fill that out. Their parent also helps them fill that out. And then they click submit and either they will get and um, a number that will tell them what their library card number is, or it will tell them if their parents need to do anything else. Or in the case of Hayward Public, they will, their parents will receive a um, information with that library card number like two business days later. So it depends upon the institution and how it works. Alameda County Library, in most cases, it's very quick, especially for adults. So um, that's definitely um, where you want to go. Now, to log into our databases, as I mentioned before, your WID number, number and your six digit class web pin is how you get in. Listed down below though, if for whatever reason you couldn't get in, click on where it says how to get into databases off campus. That will lead you to a handout. Now it asks for a password here. And that password is with a capital H, health, spelled out the entire word. 
and then the digit 40. And this, this is a type of handout that I can't simply put on a public roll or web page, but for good reason, because down below are alternative methods to get into databases. So if your WID number is for whatever reason not working, you can get into our EBSCOhost databases through this method, going to this URL, then with this username and password or um, to the Gale eBooks with this one, with this particular, and then follow these steps. So that is mentioned on that handout. Down below that are um, our databases. Now, Explora or OneSearch will be, no, not OneSearch, oh, OneSearch, um, OneFile. Explora OneFile will be what your, um, student at their public library will come across. And uh, this is where I would encourage them to look for especially results that will meet their um, reading levels because um, looking at other databases is going to be more sophisticated. So while there would be uh, more information on, um, we'll use vaping again as an example. By the way, notice, that when I entered vaping, it gave me suggestions to also use electronic cigarettes, and et cetera. And you notice that it took me to these results. And while, yes, some academic journals ended up on being listed here as well, um, a lot of them are going to more fit the level. So um, here we have a Salem Press Encyclopedia, which Usually, listed below would be the text. It looks like they have an error there right now, but that's okay. We have entire ebooks that can definitely lead you. That will definitely um, meet the reading level of your students. Um, if you see a lot of academic journals on that page and you want the writing to be more at the level of what your students are reading at, you would encourage them to limit their search to magazines or to books. And thus, um, these will be more at their reading level. And um, looks like uh, most of our results are more um, social than health. And so um, if that happens, there's often usually a separate health database. At our library, we have Health Source Consumer Edition. And then we can go into this other database. And yes, now we can see definitely some items definitely related to health. And again, it looks like um, we're mainly getting a lot of periodicals. Now, for some reason, if you wanted to give um, some students some information from the scholarly journal, you can click on scholarly peer reviewed journals while you're in here and then read a journal article itself if you so desire. So that's how I did that. Otherwise, if it's the opposite and you're getting a lot of, for whatever reason, scholarly journal articles, you can instead click on down below where it says major magazine articles. And that way you can then definitely just come across the magazine articles on the topic itself. When you come across a result that you want to provide a citation for, um, Sometimes you have to make a couple of steps to get to the full text itself. And if you click on the side option, or it will be on a yellow piece of paper if you have PDF coming up. And by the way, if PDF comes up, always go inside the PDF window itself. Otherwise, what you might be saving or printing may be just the record and not the article itself. So, you know, it's like with any Adobe Acrobat article, go to that level. But um, back to here. We scroll down and here is MLA and up above is APA. And this is a good example of something I should um, warn you about because while these um, databases do a decent job as best as they can to um, state citations, you notice that the APA citation, there are words that APA usually suggests you do not cap. I would say that the words talk about and vaping are not capped according to APA. But, you know, like I said, a uh, computer can only do so much. So make sure when you're doing your citations, you have your citation handout and or your citation um, book um, ready so that you can um, do some minor corrections to the citation that you might be copying and pasting. 
when you email an article to yourself, which I always recommend you do when you come across something promising, I always recommend filling out the subject line because things can show up in your spam folder. So I'm going to say vaping article number one. And then I'm going to make sure my full text options are checked. And if it's a desired citation format, we can do that as well. Though they'll remember we still need to um, double check that and then click send. And a confirmation will let you know it's been sent from their end. It might be a few minutes before it gets to you. That ding told me that it definitely showed up in my um, email. So um, as you can see, it can most often be more faster than not. So that's in general is um, where you go to um, do some research. So the ones that most meet the level of your students are the eBooks that are listed under reference resources. And I'm gonna be showing you a little bit about that in a moment. Um, Explora, the Health Source Consumer Edition, the Science Reference Center, the Mass Ultra School Edition, and Master File Complete, all of those will more often than not match your reading levels of your students. If you see academic journals coming up, you might want to um, skip over those or um, change your searches to like limit them to magazines or to ebooks in those cases. Down below, we have to find more sophisticated information. Sanal so Complete is the nursing journal database. And then Education Research Complete is definitely where you want to go if you're looking for articles about how to approach how to teach to middle school students. Um, definitely a good place to go. And that would be for you, definitely not for your students. And so um, medical school, say instruction, Maybe we'll include about, about the being, um, and notice that um, when it comes to search terms, never long phrases, think of concept and then concept on each line or put and in between each of your concepts if there's one line. And that will um, give you a good idea of where to go. And as you can see, there's um, definitely some scholarly articles that include instruction regarding related vaping, although not that much. I suspect if I selected e-cigarettes. Oh, actually, no. I'd probably have to expand to smoking at large or something like that. But um, that's definitely where you're going to go. And then schools tackle voping and then, then new health problems. That might be something you're interested in from Education Week. And if you're not sure, the abstract is a brief summary of what the article is about and will be your best time saver um, to determine if that article matches or not. One thing I do want to um, point out to you in the citations, um, and I'll, let me show this again. So for APA, um, looks like it doesn't, um, they don't, because there's no DOI number, they're not requiring it. But for um, MLA, since there's no DOI number, it's giving you what is called the permalink. And if you're ever not sure what the permalink is when you find an electronic article, it's never what's up here, because that's just a result from a database search. Instead, you look for anything that looks like a chain link or says permalink or permanent link. And that's where you go to find that for your citation. So that's a little bit about our quick experience of databases. Articles Plus, by the way, is our largest if you want to search across most of our databases. It's not everything, but mostly everything. And if you do go in here, make sure that you first get out of guest access. So you see that hello guest, you get that rid of that. And then you start your search there. And that's where you're going to see results in the hundreds of thousands usually as you would experience in Google. Okay, in the third column are reference resources. So Gale eBooks is um, pretty much the reference database that a library has. And what a library does is that they then purchase various different reference, e-reference encyclopedias. So what we have and what Hayward Public would have and what Alameda County Public would have would be totally different e-books. But 
a number of them are going to be the same. And so, I mean, it doesn't hurt to first search through ours and a lot of the similar titles will, if not the same titles will show up in some of the others. So when you go into Gale eBooks, you enter your search terms such as, um, actually let's do a different search. Let's say um, sleep and health, for example. Notice by the way, as I gave me other suggestions and that may be a good idea of how to um, narrow our search if need be. As we can see immediately, we're being led to resources such as the sleep disorder source book. So if we're talking especially about certain sleep disorders, we may immediately want to click on that and explore its tables of contents. And so as you see down below, we um, going through an ebook, um, it's usually st stretched into different parts. And so click on arrows and whatnot to further browse and determine what um, is in here. Or if you so desire, search within publication on the top right and then enter a term like a say insomnia, for example. And so that led us directly to the insomnia heading in this particular ebook. Now, a couple steps back, we also had a, um, a um, looks like a result on actually, um, let me go back to this page on sleep under Encyclopedia of Wellness. And you might say, well, I might wanna take a look at that as well. And so definitely I'm um, going ahead and look through that. What's nice about subject encyclopedias is they're written by the same type of persons that write scholarly journal articles. The only difference is, is that they're introductory and they're written for you, know, you the general user rather than someone from the same discipline. So an academic journal article will say be written by a health professional for other health professionals. And so a lot of things are already assumed of general understanding. And then it goes into a direct um, study and population study or um, particular experimental type of lab. And so if you really want to learn things for the first time, that's where a subject encyclopedia is a good place to go. And unlike Wikipedia, where anyone can author and anyone can edit, these are written by <laughs> professionals who actually got their credential degrees to write these sources. And they also have a list of a whole bunch of references at below, which unlike a Wikipedia article, those could either be good or either be hokum, but at least here, these are definitely- Wait, Norm, totally. you're saying Wikipedia is not accurate? <laughs> <laughs> you have to hope for the one general moment where um, the person who last looked at it was a health professional and had all yes. the time to make it all right <laughs> at that particular moment, yeah. Yeah. So um, here, you know, you have some better guarantees. So um, that's why I recommend that you go to the subject encyclopedias rather than Google and Wikipedia at large. There is a link here that immediately goes through all of our um, reference. I mean, our met that's related to medicine. So if you just want to focus on the medicine encyclopedias, you can click on where it says GVR health references only as well as these various individual titles, which as you can see down below, we have sleep disorders source book here, or if your subjects on vaping, encyclopedia of drugs, alcohol, and addictive behavior. If your items on stress, gosh, for some reason, a lot of people seem stressed lately. I wonder why. Um, stress in the modern world is <laughs> definitely a good place to go. Although, um, of course, um, when it comes to eBooks, um, it's been a while since they're published. So the stress in the modern world was published in 2017. So if you were looking for stress related to the COVID crisis, you're not gonna find that here. Although you might want to um, relate it to say disease or pandemics or something like that to expand your search historically, which is something you can definitely do. So um, various different encyclopedias are listed in the third column. Fourth column finally is public library resources. So where you can tell your students to go. Now, some public libraries have immediately some health links and places to go that are local, um, give them definite, um, even individual magazine titles. It looks like San Jose Public has provided. While others don't have this particular type of page, um, Oakland Public has a page like this as well. 
but others um, don't. Alameda County currently doesn't and Hayward Public Library doesn't. So that's why I put her down below. I have go to Alameda County Library and then just start searching or better yet, you can go to Alameda County Gale eBooks. And when you come to this point, what you wanna do next is in this case, we're going to not follow the lean library because that's gonna take us back to Chabot College. Instead, we're gonna select that where it's a public library going to Alameda County Library or Hayward Library, which has this as well. Enters a bar, we enter our barcode, which um, I already have one and a pin, which I already have one. If you don't have a pin as of yet, you would create a pin and say, don't have a pin yet. And then it will create, and then it will allow you to create a pin. And oh, well, this worked for me earlier today. Mm -hmm course when it knows when when I'm live. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, it looks a little bit different than what we see from Gale eBooks, but there's definitely a medicine category here. You can immediately skip to medicine and then you can search within this collection. And it um, looks like this has definitely um, probably more um, eBooks, especially related to the level of your students than even we have because um, they're a public library and we are a community college. And so we're more academic. So we also have some academic oriented type of reference. Whereas here, oh, this is definitely a good place to go if students are exploring something for the first time. So if you're especially in Alameda County, I actually would um, show this in your presentation if you can. So definitely plan ahead of time to make sure you have your library card to show them that for your presentation. That's a good Another, idea. Okay, so in addition to that, we have some additional nutrition and fitness information here. Um, John Chan, um, one of my, our fellow librarians, originally put this page together. So it's especially focuses on nutrition and fitness, um, as well as um, I've added um, Gale Directory Library if you're looking for other nonprofits. So if you click here, one thing I will warn you ahead of time is sometimes you might have to be a little creative of search terms. So for example, if I enter vaping, nothing comes up and you're thinking, okay, well, there's nothing on here. Well, that you need to understand a nonprofit organization that talks about vaping will probably be something say related to smoking. And um, down here, we have action on smoking on health, Grand in Scotland, but and in Colorado, but there are some things down below, um, National Organization Action on Smoking on Health. When you come across something like this, it gives some detail about it. And when you go to, oh, not that one, I don't wanna to go to their Twitter page, I wanna to go to the webpage for their nonprofit. Here's who they are, what they have, and they have all sorts of different um, handouts and publications. The only thing you need to keep in mind with nonprofit organizations is they're usually an advocacy type of organization. So um, they will definitely incorporate a lot of science, but they're definitely going to have a cause behind it. So you definitely need to keep that in mind when you um, look at nonprofits. But it's definitely a good place to go. And when you go through the Gale Directory Library, rather than Google at large, these are nonprofits that have been looked at, vetted, and have the right information with their directory and phone numbers and contacts that you can't even easily find if you went to a Google page at large of that same nonprofit. So it's definitely a good place to go. And yes, you will need your WID number and your six digit class web pin to go through the Gale directory library. As for search terms, um, these are, here's some examples for this type. Um, like I said, you have to be um, flexible and sometimes think broader, sometimes a little bit more specific, it depends. And definitely in Gale Directory Library, um, one thing that you might want to include is the United States or California, or even San Francisco or Bay Area. Although Bay Area may be a little bit problematical because there's more, you know, um, Michigan has a Bay Area, Massachusetts has a Bay Area, but um, California and say smoking if we want to find something more local. Although if you are finding something more local, I would recommend the blue book before here. That would be a better starting point, but this is definitely here available at your disposal. So I already talked a little bit. I about wonder, Norm, I wonder if more um, 
if more references come up if you use teens versus middle schoolers i'm i'm not oh, sure yes. how these databases oh, yeah. work yeah. i'm just curious yes and actually better than teens is teenagers when it comes to okay searching or adolescents okay um in other words don't think okay. of um teens as sort of you know a shortened version definitely you'll get results but you might lose something versus okay. teenagers which would be larger is what i would right like. okay that's good to know yeah and then they can just scale it to what's appropriate for the middle yeah. school teenager range yes okay so Thanks. i mean something like that say i'm going back to here smoking and teenagers let me just show this to you we'll explore off. we're definitely gonna have a lot more results than they've been in Meaning led us to a lot of academic journals, but um, we can limit that, say, to magazines or encyclopedias or to books, as you can see on the left. And yeah, 1,699 types of articles, including from Alcoholism Report and Current Health Teens and lots of general types of publications that say your students would never mm -hmm. find on Google that could be more useful and much more succinct and much more faster. And definitely the first one here is, as you notice, it's from 1994. We can definitely limit our publication using the sliding date bar, publication date bar. So we can limit this, say, to say the last seven years. And there we go. If you want, and you can definitely show that to your students if you are incorporating this to this degree of the library in your presentation. I only know you have so much time. So, like I said, there's World Wide Web and then the sign page, this is available here. So if you have any questions, where do you wanna go first? Well, if we were physically open, in addition to the chat reference, I would mention our phone and of course our, the reference desk itself, but as we are in these interesting times right now, you definitely want to go to the chat reference box. If you want to ask me something specifically, say something I talked about today, um, you can definitely email me. It might be a half a day at least before I get back to you, but I'll be, I, I'm definitely available at your disposal for any questions you have related to this assignment. And like I said, if you have trouble logging in, that's where this comes in. And again, to get to this page, health with a capital H spelled out the entire word, followed by four zero. And that's how you get to this page. And this will tell you how to get into EBSCOhost, so Explora or um, Gale Group for Gale. And then, of course, if you do have issues with the public library, you, of course, will need to contact the public library. And they have their own chat reference from their pages. And so they'll be able to help you from there. So here's where I would ask if you have any questions. And then if we were physically available, I would have then had you starting to do your research and I would have gone around. And if you were befuddled, I would have helped you. But in this case, it'll be up to you. So feel free to contact me or the reference librarian on duty and we'll be more than happy to help you. So Sherry, do you have any questions or anything you'd like to add? Well, this was most helpful, Norm. Yeah, I think it'll be really effective in helping the students be able to shorten their research time because they know what they're getting is accurate instead of starting with a search engine and having to spend tens of hours going through to find out what's um, accurate. So this, this was really helpful and I appreciate it. I also really love the 211 resource that yeah. my students can pass along to the middle schoolers as well. I think that'll be really That's helpful. very important. Those resources. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. So thank you for mentioning it. Yeah, this was oh. wonderful. I appreciate it. Okay, bye everyone and again, if you need help, ask for help. Don't uh, just assume that you have to endure it. In this time and age, all the more, we are available for you to answer your questions. Yeah, well, we appreciate knowing that you're there. So thank you so much for offering that. Okay. Thank you.
Bye, everyone. Bye, students. <laughs> and the only way I know how to end it is this way. So I will say goodbye to you as well then. OK, great. Thank you so yeah. much, Norm. I appreciate your time. No problem. OK, Bye. thanks. Bye-bye.